Hey y'all, N4H and H here. And uh, I've already taken this out of the big package and um, I've cut it open here. So let's see what's in here. So one of my viewers told me he was gonna be sending this to me uh, for me to try it out on my FTDX10 and check the um, you know, audio settings, you know, the audio parameters that we do with our microphones using the, the two different three-band parametric EQs in the rig. So this is a W2 uh, ENY microphone. Here's the packaging. So it's uh, very, very small. Look at this. <laughs> very flexible little desk mic. And it came with the modular connector that will be needed for the FTDX10. So, uh, well, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get all the packaging off of it here, the twist tie and, uh, and, and the rest here, and then I'll hook it up and try it out. We'll see what happens. Okay, so here we are looking at the FTDX10. Let me take the dust cover off, power it up. I'm going to turn on the external monitor as well. And so here's the microphone. You know, just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna power down for a moment while I plug in the mic. There we go. And now power back up. Probably wouldn't have hurt, heard anything, but uh, why take a chance? All right, so uh, here it is. Let's see, I'll give you a point of reference here so how big it is compared to the radio all right so I'm going to do a little I'm going to put my headphones on and do some audio testing and uh, get it close and then I'll get on the air with it and we'll see how it does okay let me let me show you something uh, the push to talk is a little on off here and it locks in in place I'm transmitting to the dummy load so uh, I don't see any other way. There are no instructions. So I think this is it to push to talk. And then when you're finished transmitting, you just flip it the other way. Uh, so you don't press it and hold it. And you know, that's okay. I will tell you this, what I'm hearing in the headphones right now is very distorted. And I'm running monitor level. So I've got monitor level at 42, which is what I typically use for a sideband. So, uh, obviously, this mic gain of 40 is going to be too much. So, let me lower that. N4 HNH testing. N4 HNH testing. There we go. It's clearing up at about 15. 1, 2, 1, 2. Now, currently, I will tell you, currently I have the EQ and the radio set for my high microphone, which you have to knock a lot of low end out of. So... That, I can tell you right now from what I'm hearing in the headphones, is not going to work with this uh, W2ENY microphone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back up my current settings. I'm going to the function menu, extension setting, SD card, and I'm going down here to menu save. Menu save, and uh, I'm going to put in new. And it's going to automatically pick today's date. So I'll go with that and just hit enter. All right. And then um, just tap function and you'll get back to here. Just back out of all of that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the function menu. And I'm going to set all the microphone parameters the way I would for a Yesu hand mic. And I'll see how, that, how close that will get. Okay, I won't bore you with that because... You have access to that on video number four of the FTDX 10 playlist. If you go back and look at video number four, video number 20 also covers that with my friend Joel's voice, slight variation for his voice. And uh, you might try that uh, video number 20 and you might like those settings as well. And those of you who are executive level or VIP level uh, members of the Patreon team that supports this channel, this www.patreon.com forward slash N4HNH, you have access to those uh, uh, microphone setting parameters via the PDF that you can download called the um, 
N4 H&H menu optimizations for the FTDX10. And those of you who have been around a while know I also have such a document for the FT710 AESS, the FT891, the FT991A, uh, the FTDX101D or MP, and the FTDX5000 MP. So uh, I won't bore you with all of that to keep the video from being long. I'm going to go ahead and just pull up my PDF and I'll plug these numbers in and then we'll get back at it. Okay, the camera's trained on the big monitor now because I want you, I want you to be able to see the, uh, the audio frequency fast Fourier transform scope. Okay, you've, you've seen in past videos uh, where I showed how to analyze good audio for both transmit and receive. The scope works both ways. And what you're going to want to see is you're going to want to see three humps in there. One in the low frequencies, one in the mid frequencies, one in the high frequencies. Currently, I have it set just as if this were a Yaesu uh, hand mic or desk mic. Because remember, the M70 and the M90 work with this radio as well as the, you know, the hand mic that came with it. And uh, you can use basically the same parameters you use for the hand mic with the M70 and the M M90. I've got different viewers that have uh, M70 and M90, and they both sound great. In fact, phenomenal using those mics with this radio. So that's what my starting point's going to be. I've got the function knob set to control mic gain, and I've got my uh, monitor level at 42 wearing the headphones. So let's see what we get on the waveform up there. N4 H&H &H, testing, transmitting into a dummy load. Hello, hello, I see those peaks. Um, You'll see a peak around, I would say, 1,500. You'll see another peak up around 2,400. And then we've got a peak down in the, uh, that's about 300, 250 to 300 range. And that, that's about right. That's good. Now, ultimately, what it sounds like in the headphones is not a final determination of what you're going to sound like because you need to get on the air and, and find out, maybe have a friend record your voice or someone who knows you, listen to you, and see if you sound natural because what you're hearing in your headphones is simply from the EQ built into the radio. You're not hearing what you sound like after you've modulated a sideband signal and been demodulated on the other end, on the receive end, and then of course put out to a speaker. So that's the ultimate test, but this can get you close. Okay, and so right now I'm not running the speech processor. I've got that turned off in the menu. You know, you just simply go into processor level You'll see, um, let me get the mouse pointer right here, processor level. If you tap that, it makes the function knob. You'll see in the top right here, now the function knob is controlling processor level. And I'm going to turn that to off. All right, pressing the function knob again, I'm going to go and switch it over to mic gain. Now the function knob is controlling mic gain. So let's see what we have. Again, I turned it down to 15 because it was very distorted in the headphones. N4 H N H, N4 H N H. Okay, that's that's not bad there, but you know, I'm, I I will say because of this microphone's form factor, you have to lean over to get a couple of inches from it. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do is adjust it to where I can be. I'm about eight inches from it right now, and I'm going to adjust that mic gain such that it sounds, you know, nice and comfortably loud. Hello, one two one two. That's getting distorted. Hello, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, so I'm gonna settle it at 30 for now. So mic gain at 30 with this W2ENY, what do you call it, a miniature desk mic? I mean, look at that. And uh, that, now I'm gonna enable the processor. Again, I've got the EQ settings mimicking as if this were a Yesu hand mic or desk mic. All right, so here we go. I'm going to switch this back over to processor level. So now the function knob is controlling the processor. I'm going to transmit in 4 H and H, and I can tell you already that um, the uh, processor is going to have to be controlled carefully. One two one two one two in 4 H and H one two one two because of running the mic gain as high as I am, so I don't have to lean over to get to the mic. You know, normally we tell you to, to transmit uh, or speak with your lips about three finger widths from the microphone element. Wow. <laughs> I can tell by the amount of background noise being added that the processor 
is really, really boosting this one. N4 H and H, N4 H and H, one, two, one, two. I mean, I'm down at processor level three. There's four. I think what I'll do now is get on the air with it. I do not have the amplifier engaged or even turned on over there, so I'll be just 100 watts, but maybe get on the air and see if I can find somebody to give me a, uh, a microphone check. Okay, before I get on the air, oh, I wanna show you a little something here. Since I'm having to, I'm not running the processor level above four right now. You can see up here on the screen. I was getting a lot of background noise, so I went ahead and lowered the mic gain to 20. 20. So I just wanted you to see that. Um, it seems like it, it doesn't pick up. The thing about it is with the microphone being, you know, unless I bend down, the mic's about eight inches away. I mean, look, it's a, it's a space saving microphone for your desk. Okay. So it's not big. Um, in fact, let me do this. Let me pan down and show you how big it is in relation to the, my, my uh, mouse or mice. I mean, it's smaller. The base of it is smaller than the mouse there. So it's a space-saving microphone. You know, therefore, it's not as high up. It's not on a boom like my 781 is. So that means that I'm, you know, I increased the mic gain with a 781. I'm running the mic gain at 40. But this mic is very sensitive, and that will have to do with the uh, characteristic impedance of it. So I'm running the mic gain lower compared to the 781 or even the Yaesu mics. But I had to boost it when I didn't have the processor on. To I boosted it to 30. I always run the speech processor, especially if you're barefoot, because you need that little extra. And it, it I would equate it this way. Think of it as like having about 3 dB of gain when you use a speech processor, boosting your, you know, your voice peaks, holding them at a higher level, uh, so uh, it does help. It cr helps with intelligibility. So I always run the processor. And I even say this about the other microphones. If you're running the with, without the speech processor, you can generally turn the mic gain up about five uh, clicks, you know. Now, this microphone is so sensitive. With the processor level at four, I'm actually finding that I can turn it it's at least to my headphones. It reduces a lot of the background noise, but I still have good, strong, uh, punchy audio with the mic gain at 20. N4 HNH testing. Let me get it out so you can see the scope in the bottom right. N4 HNH, one, two, one, two. And you st still see uh, the peaks. And uh, you can tell down there in the bottom end, I've got some really nice low content in there. I'm hoping it's not too much because I don't want to sound muddy. So right now, the uh, transmit BPF, that's the bandpass filter for transmit, that is set to 300-2700, just like I would with a Yaesu mic. So looking on the scope, that's, that's looking real good. I will tell you, though, in the headphones, I'm still, hearing, I'm still hearing a lot of room, but it's not as bad as it was. So if somebody tells me that I could get away with a lower mic gain, I'm going to go for that because I've already got the processor down at 4. I did go ahead and hook up the amplifier, so I've got the power level at 16 watts. That should give me around 700-ish watts, six or six or 700 watts with the Elecraft uh, amplifier over there. So let me see if I can get on the air. So Mike gave me a good mic check here. So said it sounds great. I didn't end up touching anything. That's K1 FNX. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, Mike. I forgot to give you a signal report a while ago. I did turn off IPO and the attenuation and check, and you were 10 solid and peaking 15. So everything working quite well, and the 7300 sounding 
as, as good as ever. You know, uh, my friend calls it the people's radio. There's so many out there and you have to work at it to mess up that transmit audio. So, uh, but yours is as it should be. It sounds great. 73 from N4 H and H again. Thank you for the help. Okay. Well, that worked out well. These scopes cause, cause a lot of curiosity these days. There's so much to look at, you know, and uh, that scope at the bottom right, of course, a very, very effective when you're looking, analyzing your own audio or others. Uh, the oscilloscope on the left is helpful too. If you uh, put it on uh, 300 milliseconds per division, like I've got it now, you can actually read the dits and daws of Morse code. If you put it on, uh, I'm gonna tap it here and switch it over to one millisecond per division. In that setting, it's good to analyze your FT8 uh, audio to be sure that you're not uh, square waving, flat topping, uh, which causes distortion. You want to be, you know, want to keep an eye on that. So, the scope technology we have in these radios today, though that's not what this video is really about. You know, things happen when I'm filming a video, and uh, hey, you know what? I like to explain uh, when it ha there goes an ionosine pulse, or chirp as it's called, because you hear a little chirp when it goes by the frequency you're listening to. Uh, so, as things happen when I'm shooting a video, you know, it gives me an opportunity to to teach something and I, and I will. I'd rather teach with actual occurrences than something that's canned and made up, okay? That's just my style. And oftentimes that's what produces a video. I just get in here to use the radio for myself and I see something and I say, hey, you know what? I might share this with uh, the viewers. So uh, yeah, good, good, good deal, this microphone. Look at this. I have no idea what they cost. Uh, like I said, one of my viewers sent it to me. I'm gonna put it on top of the FTDX10 to give you a little reference of the size. My viewer sent it to me and asked me if I would go through and find out what microphone parameters would work good with it. So I have found those parameters and it is basically the same as setting up a Yesu hand mic, but with lower mic gain and for that matter, lower processor gain. Let me flip those. Uh, I'll get you back to the big screen and review that. Move the mic out of the way. So we wound up at um, mic gain at 20, processor level at 4, and he said it sounded okay. Now, obviously that can be different for everyone's voice. Those would be good starting points, and then you could adjust up or down as necessary. But as far as the EQ parameters, I'm running off the same ones that I use for the Yesu hand mic or desk mic, as shown in video number 4 and video number 20. Slight variation of it in video number 20 because it was my friend Joel's voice. And of course, those parameters are covered in the menu optimizations PDF for the FTDX10 as well as the other radios that I mentioned earlier. I hope that this will help my viewer who sent this microphone to me. I appreciate that very much. It is nice that it saves space on the desk. Looks good sitting here next to the uh, mice. Okay, I hope you found the video helpful and informative. Thank you to the Patreon support team who bring you these videos. If you're watching a video now, it's because of what I call the long haulers. They've uh, joined through the Patreon program and supported this channel for a year and two and even more. Those long haulers are what, you know, funds the channel enough that I can keep these videos coming. I appreciate any, any level you can help, though. Uh, there are three levels of support. You can find one that's comfortable for you if you like this type of content and want to see it continue. Uh, you can vote. As they say, vote with your wallet to help uh, offset the cost of doing this. To uh, join that team, go to www.patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. That's patreon.com forward slash N4H and H. And if you would give the video a thumbs up, a like, that helps us out with YouTube search algorithm and costs you nothing. And you're actually helping the channel uh, by doing that. And also consider subscribing to the channel. That helps as well. If you do subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a new video, usually two a week occasionally a third. And also finally, if you would, please share the link to this video on social media, text message, email, or phone a friend. Hey, thanks again for watching and 73 from N4HNH.